we are giving Goodwill a chance because we're in a different place. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey everybody, it's George the Antique Nomad. I was looking at my merchandise when I unpacked for the show in Michigan and thinking, wow, I got some really good deals. Then I remembered that we spent an entire day as a group thrifting. We went to vendor malls and ended up at a Goodwill and found some real bargains. And I never showed you that footage. I think it's fun and interesting to see the difference between shopping those type of places as to an antique store where you know everything you're looking at is pretty much old. For those of you who are thrifters and resellers, it will be illuminating both as to what you can find and the bargains you can get, and also the fact that it's a little more limited than shopping at a place where everything is curated and juried. It's just a different animal. So come on, let's go and take a look. Oh, is this the entrance? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, here we go. We have got a whole bunch of stuff in here and this is Finders Keepers. This is a chain of vendor malls throughout this part of the country and sometimes they've got cool things so we're going to see if they have anything vintage. Five dollars for a swan planner? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Okay, and because we've got to find some things as we're... We Our first the... buy and we just started, see? You have to fill the card, it's good luck. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Twelve dollars on the tomato pitcher. That's something we see from the 40s and 50s and we see a lot of tomatoes in this part of Indiana because they grow a lot of tomatoes in this part of Indiana. In fact, Heinz had or has a big ketchup factory near here. A little bit of vintage vinyl here. Let's see what we've got. Star Trek in 76. Wow. Space Age, if you consider the Who and the Temptations and ABBA part of the Space Age, which I guess they are. Barry Manilow, maybe a little less Space Age. Let's see what we have down here. Peter Gordon. The Everly Brothers, Jackie DeShannon, looks like the right era, Fabian, woo, Fabian, he was a big success for a very brief period of time in the late 50s. Not that it was all about looks or anything, he had 16 fabulous hits as well. Shot on off. Well. I don't see anything that looks like it's radio or really rare. Promotional only is what I like to find. Ew. Arctic Boy. This is $30. That's not a bad price for one of these old galvanized. It's a little more recent, like probably 60s because it's got the plastic nozzle. If you find them with the metal nozzles, those are the most desirable. We're telling Misty, put it down, back away. <laughs> But I see colors like this. Jacqueline oh. Kennedy. She did find a cute earring tree from the 70s there. I'm just mainly snooping on what they're looking at, and really I need to be shopping for my own stuff, so I'm going to go down a different aisle here where Mark is. These two are like We see a lot of this. I think this was made by Monmouth Pottery here in Indiana, if I'm not mistaken. Six dollars. It's old. They did those as far back as I believe the teens or twenties, and I think kept making them into the fifties. So they are prevalent. Like a lot of picker smalls, there's going to be everything from second hand to Fabulous. At least we're hoping for fabulous. There's a Lodge teapot. $50. These big kettles really do sell for pretty good prices. A lot of people like them for decoration on the stove, but they will use them as well. I think that's an older... Ooh, let's make a big noise. I think that's an older Lodge mark. And then this is a pattern that looks sort of like Franciscan's Coronado but it's a knockoff by another 
California Pottery Company. And yeah, not marked. And not really of much interest to collectors. Knockoffs often do not fare well in the secondary marketplace because people want the originals. Now this is cute. Look at this turned crib. This has got date to, oh gosh, 1910, 1920, and they say it's 100 years old. I think they're right about that. Very cute piece. This looks like it's probably decorated in a Randsburg style. Randsburg was here in Indiana. And indeed that mark looks like it's perhaps Randsburg or Monmouth. They have it marked McCoy. It's not McCoy and I don't think that's its original lid. We see the McCoy rustic tea set in pink and green with brown. I almost never see it in white. $30 for all three pieces. It's not a bad price at all. I like the leaf up here too. This is 1940s. It says it's Nelson McCoy. But it actually is marked Rumrill. So this was likely made by the Red Wing Pottery for Rumwill. It is not a Nelson McCoy. At $20, it's priced about retail. Brown, $50. It is a color. People like the colors in typewriters now. Now this piece is McCoy, and it's only $25, but the paint's a little worn, so that could be an issue, because this is a $50 jar in the right place. But it's got a big old crack. It's one thing with McCoy, especially with cookie jars. You know, kids would nab a cookie and then they'd drop the lid really fast because mom was coming into the room. So we see a lot of broken lids on cookie jars. These are paint by numbers. I've had these before out of the 50s with the parrots. They're $25 for the pair, not a terrible price at all. If I was headed to Florida, I'd probably get them, but I'm not. Gallery wall because of their size, they, they just fit in easily with yeah. Your bigger ones. Barb says we're enabling her and you can go, hear Misty Barb. convincing go, her. Barb. Yay, good choice. I liked them too. I'm not sure whether to hate this table or want to paint it and make it something different because it's got interesting design. I get the feeling maybe it should have a glass top. It seems that's, very impractical. That's what I was going to say. It probably had a, a big glass top. A big glass top. I'm usually all against repainting things if they're in good shape, but yeah. boy, with this pickled finish, I would definitely paint this out make it like seven different colors, like Mexican pottery or something. I think it'd be more fun. I decided to skip an aisle and let them shop down the next aisle. And I'm gonna cheat ahead because I found a 40% off booth. Everything except tables and benches. And I guess it's 40% off the last mark price. So this shelf, which was marked down to 89, would now be around $55. Nice older picnic basket was 28 yeah that's not cheap enough for me but I like it then we've got some old toolboxes and things blacksmith interesting to see a blacksmith box with that sort of stenciling so this is 20th century blacksmithing I wonder if there's anything in it Looks like someone else has looked, and no, just some divider drawers. There's a saw cutter. A very old wooden shelf with a very suspicious looking cluster of something under there. I think they're nuts. Bartlett pear box is going to be $15. I could see buying that to use in shows, but I don't see anything here that I need. However, here's another space with a bunch of vintage, so this looks interesting. Bug duster sprayers. It used to be nobody wanted these and you just threw them away. Now there are collectors for these. Especially if they have good names like insecticide. That one's a spray well. Some of these came preloaded and some I think you put your own chemical in. Chapin. Here's the Raleigh's Improved Duster. Yes, this is bug control. It's for insect dust. It's for louse killer. And for louse powder. Mm, delicious. 
I think insecticide is going to come with me. I just like that graphic. This is some nice glassware made to go along with Noritake. So this is part of the Noritake spotlight pattern, but a lot of these were made by various companies. Tiffin made heavy glass like this for Franciscan in the United States as go-alongs around the same period. These are $6 a piece. It's not a bad price for what they are. This is quite old. It says red footed jar and it's $8. This is Victorian. It's ruby flash, actually more of a pigeon blood color. This is on the glass, not in the glass. It's got a bird at $6. I think it's a must buy just because it's got a bird on it and a nice little minaret. It doesn't have any big chips or cracks. And like they say, put a bird on it. What else do we have in this space that's been promising so far? Kind of cute, it's got a nice mark on it. Earthen Vessel, copyright 1991. Well, cute, but nothing I really need. And here is a nice drip cup syrup bottle. Now, if this handle was Bakelite rather than just an empty plastic, that'd be a bargain at $5. It's not a bad price at $5 anyway, but I've got a few of those already. And then this is advertising. This is Federal Glass Company excavating and turf. Great color, not the most exciting <laughs> purpose, however. This is a Victorian-era transfer plate. So let's see what this platter is. T and J. Mayer, and it's the Florentine pattern. This is going to date to probably 1890 or so. When you see these stamps on the back, sometimes you'll see just this, and sometimes you'll also see an emboss mark with the maker's name because sometimes they would sell them as blanks and then sometimes they decorate them themselves. This is English and it's going to be before 1891 because it doesn't have made in England on it even though it was meant to be exported here. Not a bad deal for 25. Canasta cards. If you're restoring old if you're restoring old vintage clothing, you may need things like this. Something to look for at estate sales and garage sales. You can get the old snaps, and this is what people used before zippers were widespread. I like the budget bank. This is a 1920s piece. I have one in brown out west for sale. It's the save away, and then you'd save for various things. So you had six different slots, probably something for the household, something for trips. It's $10, not a bad deal at all. Little Scotty style trinket box from the 1930s. Cardboard. Let's see what they're finding over there. I know they're finding all the good stuff. <laughs> We're all finding good stuff. You don't know. <laughs> the prices are just like a little bit like, eh. Yeah. $2 and. 22. 15, yeah, 22 with 15% off. and It's pretty, but yeah, it's kind of right on the line because it's a basic pattern, but it's a good color. and I love the peacock tail pattern. Though. I do too. And it's an older piece. It's not like that reproduction. Oh yeah, no, that's 1910s easy or maybe even a little older. So yeah. it's cute, but I don't think I'm gonna. it's just, it's yeah, if it ball. was just a little cheaper, I know what you mean. It's one thing with vendor malls. They're kind of a hybrid of flea market and antique malls. So some people price at retail and some people price at bargain prices. So you really have to think about things before you buy. This is Pigeon Forge pottery. And that's actually a rather nice piece with the decoration. Pigeon Forge always has a really good mark. It has been a big tourist thing up in the Smoky Mountains for a long time. I don't usually pay $15 for Pigeon Forge. With the decoration, it might well be worth it. Very cute little bluebird tin plate behind. Some of those were attached in chimney flue covers, but that one looks like it was just meant to be a plate. That's very sweet for $5. More drip cup syrups. You see the original 50s style, the 60s style where it loses the metal top, and the 70s style where the metal top comes back, but it's a modern color and a different shape. This is a Gemco. That one might be the most collectible of all three nowadays with the interest that people have in mid-century design. When you're tired of that glass you just can't sell, you glue it together and make things out of it. At least that's the 
press thing to do with it. And some of these are pretty cute. I've never seen anyone do figurines out of them before. So that is a pair of 1960s early American glasses. There's a pressed glass bowl. There's a couple of vases stuck together. And here's one that's supposed to be an angel. Cute ideas. I like this one that looks like a lamp. If it could be wired as a lamp, that would be pretty slick. And then some of them, I just don't know what they're trying to do. I know Barb's already been here and seen these, so she apparently passed by the Incoware. I like the designs because they have a Western feel to it, and they're only a dollar each. I wonder if maybe she didn't see these. I should bring her back here and show her. It might be too plain a pattern for her taste, but the prices are certainly right, so I think I'll go get her and show her these. Well, it turned out that Barb had already seen the Incoware bowls, and she grabbed some of them, so I'm glad she didn't miss out. Here's one of these pineapple Hawaiian looking siesta wear glasses from the 60s with the wood handle. They're hard to find in good condition. The metal would lose its plating like this one has. The handle isn't cracked too badly, but it does have a crack. So you really have to look hard to find these in good shape these days, which is why they're collectible. Special on Mrs. Stewart's bluing. This would have been a point of purchase display back in the 1960s. Mrs. Stewart's bluing was useful. I know the Treasure Craft Company used Mrs. Stewart's bluing to apply to the faces of their pixies so that the glaze wouldn't stick onto them and that way the faces were exposed bisque that looked cute and could be painted with lips and such. One thing in here that is interesting to me that I want to show is this magazine. Because you're going to see these sometimes at sales, and it says Hobbies Magazine. And you might just pass it by thinking, well, I'm not a hobbyist. But this was a huge collector's magazine back in its day, and they talked about all sorts of different collectible and antique items. So it can actually be a really great source of information. Some of the articles have information about old-time antiques that we don't see anymore, and you can also cry when you see how inexpensive everything was back then before all these things got discovered. Let's see if we can get through the ads, which were numerous because this is how you advertised nationally back then. Before internet, this is how it was done. But let's see if we can find an article because sometimes the articles are really good. Okay, here's one, for example, talking about the Ford collection of rare watches. And boy, there are some amazing ones. Look at that one shaped as a cross. It would be cut glass catalog. So there's definitely some old school information in here that may not exist readily available in other forms. It's definitely as a point of study for people who really are into antiques. There's some pretty neat things. And here is a good article on firearms, including the Harper's Ferry firearms. Harper's Ferry was the first national arsenal and there were weapons made that were specifically called Harper's Ferry, and it's only a dollar. I've already read this one or else I would get it. Ooh, I see something really good in this card I think I'm going to take while they're not looking. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, they caught me. <laughs> Hi there. Are you... He came up and he was like, we're going to take what's in your car. <laughs> Are you finding stuff? Yeah, a little good. bit. Good. Me too, a little. Look at this. Look at the Joker. How cool. Oh, Isn't that's neat. Cute? Oh, those are very cute. Oh, yeah, someone's going to love those. <laughs> that's great. It's so funny we picked up the same thing. I'm not surprised, though. I think we are uh, going to get to the counter and everyone's going to go, oh, I almost bought that. I almost bought that. <laughs> That'll be funny. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at this guy. Is this a Louisville Stoneware Goat Bank? Hmm. It does not have a name on it. I am not convinced that it's Louisville stoneware, but it is really cute. Oh, look at that. 666. So this is the uh, evil ram. <laughs> I don't think they had that in mind when they painted that guy. And here's a couple of other things that I know I can identify as either Mary Hadley or Louisville stoneware. This is M.A. Hadley pottery. $4 for the little pig ornament is not a bad price. I'll probably get that. And then these are cutesy with the little teddy bears, also Mary Hadley. It's $5 for the pair. They're little child size. I have not been having as much luck with child size ceramics and collectibles. 
Ooh, let's see the Atlas Bank. These sell pretty readily. They don't go for a ton. A lot of these were given away. They're to look like batteries from the 1950s. This one's eight bucks. I think they sell for about 15. I'll go ahead and get that. It's so interesting now that I'm getting into the part of the store where everyone else has always been to see what they picked up and what they left behind. I guess I'm not seeing what they picked up till I get to the front, but $4 for the little Japanese donkey bank. I am surprised nobody grabbed him, but I'm going to. I think he's very cute. And behind him is somebody with cactuses, also a bank. Also $4. This is Japan, 1950s. The faces aren't great, but actually the western aspect with the cactus is, so I'm going to get that too. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm admiring this dish. Yes, I like it. It looks like lefton? It could be. It's Hard to say. A little Haviland piece is there. It Shaff is it Shafford? Oh, Shafford. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I don't... Cashmere, cashmere Rose. Wow. Hand painted. Cashmere. Wow. Well, that's got to be fancy. $6. And look, Blue Geese. Well, six dollars isn't bad. It's funny, just like all these vendor malls, it's like some of the prices are really cheap and some of them are, you know... It's interesting well. to see where people get, you know, think their value lies. Exactly. And what might be different here than somewhere down the road. Especially the way you're going. You're, you're driving a really cool way because there's all those uh, gold, different towns. Gold painted bottle. Ooh. Do you, do you want a gold painted bottle? <laughs> <laughs> I might need an actual, I don't even drink Coke and I might need some. I'm groggy. Well, here's some beer mirrors. Let's see if we can find anything older, but it looks like the prices are pretty high. This one is Wiedemann out of La Crosse, Wisconsin. They want $37. That's definitely top end for that as far as I'm concerned. Oh my. This space has a lot of new things and a few old things. Let's see if the old things amount to much. These rotary blades are fun as wall art. A lot of people are using them as that or garden art now. And there's an older enamel piece. But so much of the rest of this is brand, brand new. I know farmhouse decor, but you know, you can do farmhouse decor old as well, and that's just what I prefer. Here's a Pilgrim glass vase. Little crackled you were here. When they started in the 50s and into the early 60s, this was their first label, hand blown by Pilgrim. You see the glass blower with the pontal rod. Most of these labels are washed off, but this is an earlier Pilgrim, so it's got the waffle mark on the bottom. They used a tool to push in the pontals so that they weren't sharp that left a little dot pattern you can see there. So that's a good way to identify early Pilgrim. And then this one, which has no label, again, has that dot pattern and is the same shape. So we know that it came from the same place. All of these are priced about retail in the 10 to $15 range. Old kids' glasses. This would have been a Westinghouse ashtray, a giveaway in the 50s when they were introducing all the different colors of stoves. So they would give out enameled ashtrays so you could see the wonderful paint job. Okay, now this is potentially good here. This is Planko. And it's a solid color where the applied leaves are the same as the background glass. It's a little on the short side, so it's $28. It's probably worth about 40, maybe 45, but that's not quite enough room for me to buy it, unfortunately, which is too bad because I'm short on Blanco and would like to find some. Hopefully in our sojourn today, we will. Old Heidelberg, $5 for that, that's older. I just don't get a lot more for them, it seems. I think I've gotten eight or ten for those before, but not really worth the sitting on it for that. First National Bank of Mount Olney. Well, since I'm on a bank kick, let's see how much this one is. It's $16. And this one was for the sesquicentennial, 150th anniversary of the United States, put out in 1926. It's actually a paperweight rather than a bank, though, even though it came from a bank. So that kind of scotches the deal for me, unfortunately. 
salt and pepper shakers. Don't see anything really there. I like the wall pocket. Eight dollars. Some Francoma, but again, prices seem like they're where they should be. And then this is a nice Van Briggle piece. Twenty-eight dollars. That's not a terrible price. You don't see the white so often. I'm almost tempted by that. I'll have to look it up and see what they're going for now. These plates are older with the scenes on them, German, from about 1920. Oh, and it's 15% off everything. Well, now I have to look at everything again with that in mind, which is a nice problem to have. Suddenly this Van Briggle becomes a yes because that makes it about $24, and I really do think this could sell for $40 to $50, so I'm going to give it a chance. Oh, you got the Van Briggle. I was trying to convince Jeffrey. <laughs> That's been, so funny. Been wanting, like, a piece. I, I debated, and then I saw the sign that it was 15% off, and I was yeah. like, yeah. I don't remember that color. Okay, is ooh, that a, somebody got a bargain. Yeah. Is that a less common color? It is. That's okay. the thing. That's, That's what, I what I liked about it, too. But yeah. This is for, to clean record, record cleaner, yeah. Yeah. I thought of Katie. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's great. Yeah. Oh, no. She, she will love that. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm happy with this dealer right away because they put on their tag modern shaving mug. This absolutely is modern. It's heavier than the old. It doesn't have wear. The transfer is to look old, but the colors are not really right for an old one. I'm glad that they were honest about it and they priced it right. So it's a perfectly fine thing to buy. It's just good to know what you're getting. Burgess and Lead Godspeed the Plow. This is an interesting design too. Farmer's Arms. This is English. This is to look like Staffordshire ware of the 19th century, but this is 20th century with all those colors. And then this is cute. Six dollars minus 15 percent. Almost tempting. Oh, and look. It's got a clown. I know someone here who would not like this. Oh, and there's another clown. Well, I will spare her from having to look at that. And then this tea tile trivet, when you see these blue colors, this actually is quite old. This is from about 1910, also European transferware. It's really very inexpensive for what it is. It's only going to be $4.25. This is fun to see. The dogs are pretty common. It says shake well, but it's got the little paper hat on it, and that's always missing on these. So he's going to be $8.50. I'm thinking of getting him just because he's complete in a way that they almost never are. And the reason they say shake well is because these were not just for candy, even though they were made originally as candy containers. This one is glycerin and rose water bath bubbles. That's why you needed to shake it. Look at the cute McCoy. $6.50, not a bad price for these, for the mugs. Hi, Yvonne. We wish you were here with us. We're all having a lot of fun. Staley Feeds has a swashbuckling pig with a peg leg. That is just too weird. I have to buy that. It's just wrong. I love it. <laughs> this plaque set is cute for decor. $6. Really not a bad price. I think someone would enjoy those. I think I will enjoy them. Well, it looks like we've just about cleaned this place out. I would say that we have ferreted out most of the bargains that were to be had here. I'm just going to walk really quickly to make sure I didn't miss anything because they all were a lot faster than I am. That is often a problem. I'm kind of a slow shopper because I like to look at everything when I'm in a place I haven't been before. I wonder if Jeffrey saw this coat because it's Leathers by Jeffrey. It looks like it's about his size. He doesn't strike me as a leather coat guy though. One thing that's really great about shopping with a lot of people is that I'm a slower shopper, but they're all in line, and so there's no one to serve me right now, which is great. So I get to look some more while they all pay for their stuff. And yes, it is a vendor mall, so you can get anything here if it's legal for you to have. But I always like to look in the cases because sometimes you'll get somebody who has vintage jewelry. 
or vintage Star Wars figures or something else vintage that is interesting to me. So I didn't see anyone else come back here. So this is my secret little thing. Here's some polished stones. At least the stones are old. And they've got dealers in coins and bills. Old video games. I'm no expert in old video games, but I do know if a machine is changing format, the things released right before the end can be a lot scarcer than others. Well, the entourage is behind me and we are waiting for a train. And while we're waiting, I guess I'll just say thanks for watching this video. Please like, please subscribe, please tell your friends. Join our member group if you're so inclined. We have information about that in the description or you can click the join button if you see that. We'll enlarge this so you can see this large train that's going by. It's a really big one because there's an engine in the middle of it. That's not good news. We might be here a while. Well, that'll give you plenty of time to check out all of the features and check out the community tab because that's where we put information about upcoming events. Let's fast forward beyond this train to our next stop. Princeton is a small town, but it has a lot going on, and that's why the show is here. It's just about equidistant from Evansville, Indiana, Indianapolis, and St. Louis. So it's actually a great place to hold an antique show. So we have another vendor mall to hit. This is in Vincennes, Indiana. This is the 6th Street Vendor Mall. This was recommended to us by a fellow who had a shop in a little town between here and Princeton. And he said this was a good place to shop. And we're hoping he's right. So once you go in past the first little lobby, there's an upstairs that says it's now open and a bunch of vendors here. So we're going to see what we can find. Oh, Olympia beer. Right off, I like this. And it's only $15. These sell for about $45 to $65 especially in Washington State, which is where Olympia beer was brewed. Right away, I found something good. I'm very happy. These are various Longaberger pottery pieces. And some of this sells fairly well because Longaberger isn't being made anymore. Even though these things were made in China and they're not that old, they are discontinued. So it is something to look for. And here's a bunch of the baskets as well. But I'm more interested in looking at some of this jewelry right here. Here's a nice 1960s piece. It's only $5. It's not anything amazing, but it's got a good look. It's cute necklace, choker length, and I think I'll get that for $5. This pink set here, which I'll pull out so you can see it better, is Morgantown's Crinkle. Seneca Glass also did something called Driftwood, which is similar. These are from the early 70s, and it's a really fun color of pink. It's a little different than the Depression pink. It's a little more magenta, a little richer, and some people really like it. It's only 25 for that beverage set. This place definitely has a mix of old and new, like most vendor malls. This has a little shaved chip on the edge, which is too bad because it's only $10, and for the yellow Pyrex, that's pretty great. Let me show you this. They have it marked as a carnival bowl, which is sort of true, but look how it breaks at the edges, the iridescence. That's called stretch glass. Instead of waiting for this piece to be completely finished, they would actually spray the iridescence on and then blow out the piece a little bit more or force it into a larger mold so that it would crackle along the edge, and that's the stretch. That was done in the mid-20s when carnival glass was starting to go out of style and they were trying to extend the line and it's an interesting treatment. Here's some Blendo glass, $14 for the chip and dip. It's really not a bad price. I like the lavender, it's in good shape. I may pick that up. Here's a 50% off booth. Don't know that there'll be anything left that I need, but I do see a couple of Knoxville World's Fair glasses. So let's take a look at what those run. They're only a dollar each. I am starting to see more collectors for this fair. I might just get one since it's only a dollar. It's different than the other ones I have for sale currently. This place is cute. It's vintage clothing and other items. Well, I shouldn't say vintage clothing. It's more vintage accessories, and I can under understand that because these will fit anyone. <laughs> or most people, at least. I have this thing about faux leopard. 
it's just delightfully cheesy and tacky and I love it and let's see how much this is and whether it's old. It is older, it's only four dollars, that's certainly a price I would pay. Let's see how tiny it is. Ooh, it's really little. <laughs> Bob Ross! It's Bob Ross! It's a little Shirley Temple. <laughs> Lollipop. <laughs> One thing about vendor malls is things are not always necessarily a better deal than an antique store because if they get something that's nice and they don't generally get a lot of higher end things then they tend to price them really high. Now it's great that this has its original crate and it is the classic older Hamilton Beach number 30 with the jadeite finish that works and it does have the original cup as well. But it's got some pitting. It's probably a $150 machine with the box. They have 265 on it. I just don't see that happening, but you know, someone might just fall in love with it and then it won't matter. When you venture into the world of newer collectibles, there are so many little subtleties. Most Hallmark ornaments are worth a few dollars. A few of them are worth quite a lot of money. I know the Star Trek series is worth a lot. There are certain discontinued ones that are worth a lot. So if you like this sort of thing, really spend some time studying it before you go willy-nilly just buying everything, especially if you're a reseller, because you want to make sure that what you're buying actually has some value for you. This is the Christmas Nativity Collection with peanuts, and that's priced at 60, and I imagine that's another one that's a little harder to find and should be more valuable. They have this marked as a hair receiver. RS Prussia with a blue mark. $12.85 seems pretty inexpensive even nowadays for RS Prussia if indeed that is. However, I see other things around this that are not necessarily exactly what they're cracked up to be, so I would need to look at it to make sure. Here's some dealer plaques. I like these. I talk about that a lot because it's advertising that was meant for stores, so there are not nearly as many as there are pieces of the items they were selling out there. These are maple tree baskets made in Zanesville, Ohio. I like the chieftain on the top there. These were done about 2000 in Zanesville. And you can see they've got the edition labels, much like Longaburger would have done. It's a very similar type of thing. These have their original tags on them. This one's marked at $12. It seems like a good deal. I don't think a lot of people have caught on to this company yet. But with Longaburger being out of the market, I suspect that all of these American-made, handmade baskets are going to go up in value again at some point. It might take 10 or 20 years though because they're just old enough to be out of fashion and not quite maybe ready to come back into fashion, but I am starting to see some interest in the more specialized ones. Okay, we're going up the stairs. We're gonna see if there's anything up here. They said this is newly open, and sometimes with newly open, it means you have dealers who price things cheaply. Here's an amber fairy lamp, stars and bars. Everybody's crazy about them now, and it's $10, so I think somebody's going to like that. I like the caddy with these. $30. Candlesticks are Westmoreland. Here's another caddy with a different style of tumblers. And then it looks like a Christmas room of newer stuff. The aluminum tree has a plastic base, so that tells me it's not really old. Will your customers buy this? It's ten dollars. Oh, ten? Yes. Um, they would. I have this one. I already have this one, so I don't think I will. Okay. The amber is a little bit harder to sell. I think so too. The clear would do well, though. Really? And blue, especially. The blue, I know the they blue. love. Yeah. The star and bar. The stars and bars is very nice, though. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was nice too, but uh, I don't. Uh, I don't I know whether not. I'm going to mess with it. There's another fairy lamp, actually. Oh, the blue satin, yes. Yeah. Yes, I remember those. Those, those are one. 80s vintage. The 
because I have a friend. <laughs> well, yeah. But I am going to see what they will do for me because cool. that is very nice. These are Hawaiian, probably monkey pod wood. And they're just salt and pepper shakers, but I think they're kind of cute. If they were perfume bottles, I'd be really excited. They did wood carve perfume bottles that look like this where the top comes off. Four dollars for the pair, I think I'll get those. Missy wants to beat them to the punch and go straight into the donation part of the center, but I don't think they'll let us. So we're going to go in the store. We are giving Goodwill a chance because we're in a different place and some Goodwills can be very good for vintage and we're hoping that this is one of them. There's Jeffrey and Misty and Barb and Mark and here we are. Last stop of the day. If there were tops of rounders that had things on them, I'd be looking at them first because that's a little trick that Yvonne Thrifty Rich lives by and she finds good things on the tops of rounders. She and I are on the tall side and so we see things that some folks don't. However, they don't have any tops of rounders that I can see here, so we're going to just look and see what's on the regular shelves and I'm going to talk over this music and we'll keep on going. And looky there, wow. Misty, it is your chance, so you could just walk right in. There's the donation section with things coming in. They really do go through a lot of stuff at Goodwill. Smart of her to look in the styrofoam boxes. Sometimes I just think, oh, that's going to be new because it's in styrofoam. But lots of things that are collectible now came in styrofoam boxes. There is a piece of Weller back here. It's oh, a... I didn't even see that. I just walked <laughs> right past it. Yeah, well, you get rummy after doing this uh -huh. all day. Oh, it's only $2, and even though the Cameo flower doesn't sell for what it used to, that's still a wonderfully low price, and it's a pretty piece someone's going to like, so I will take that. That's Indiana glass, uh -huh. I think, with the dots, and it's very avocado right out of the 70s. $5. Mm -hmm. If you need a pretzel with your beer, well, there's oh, yeah. all in one. What is the pretzel handed beer mug? It's German, of course, but it's pretty recent, so I'm going to leave that. But it was kind of a cute idea. <laughs> Misty is slapping Jeffrey's hand so she doesn't like what he got. That's will, nice. I will not be buying it, unfortunately. Oh, no. it's $15. Well, th that's... Which is okay. That's hardly the problem, in my opinion. This is this early American pattern, this American... Yeah. It, it's harder to sell. Yes. Yes. Even though this is the Cinderella... The mixing. shape is great. That's the Cinderella mixing bowl, but and this is a four-piece bowl. It would have had three more bowls in it. Yep. But that's just a very tough pattern to sell. And fifteen dollars, yeah, too much. I, I think it's a tough pattern too because of the color. It's just sort of a murky shade of brown. Well, the events of the last year have definitely taught me to look at all of these old games. There's one that might be considered retro now. This is the one we played with Fat Birds Finds on their channel. And some of the early editions of Trivial Pursuit are selling for some extra money. But I don't see anything that I really have to have. Another thing with thrift stores is it does pay to make a quick pass by the toys. Every so often something old does filter in even though most stuff is brand new. Once in a while something will surprise you. This Goodwill stop was actually a success. We all found something and that hasn't happened in a Goodwill for a long time. So I am glad to see a Goodwill that is selling vintage and that you can still find some deals here. Well, it was so much fun getting to show you this review of our day thrifting as a group. It was a fun experience and a little different than my usual, so I'm glad I got to share it with you. I am George the Antique Nomad. I will be back to you with more adventures from the world of antiques and collectibles and vintage. So stay tuned and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye for now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!